In this video, I'm going to work out four examples of some trig derivatives, um, each of them probably including a chain rule at some point. Okay, so at this point, I am assuming that you know all of your trig derivatives and you have been introduced to chain rule. Alright, so in this first example here, I've got y equals secant of 4x to the fifth. Alright, so if I'm going to take the derivative of this, I'm going to go y prime. Alright, I have to have the derivative of secant memorized as secant tangent. Alright, secant is the outside function. My inside function is at 4x to the fifth, so I am going to have to include a chain on this. So derivative of secant is tan secant tangent. So secant of 4x to the fifth times tangent 4x to the fifth and then times the chain which would be the derivative of the inside function so times the derivative of 4x to the fifth which is that inside function all right so simplifying here on the next line a little bit secant 4x to the fifth tangent 4x to the fifth and then times taking the derivative there I'm going to have a 20x to the fourth all right so at that point now I've completed the chain completed the derivative rewrite this I'm going to put this out in front of those trig uh, functions just to make it look a little nicer clean it up so overall overall derivative is 20x to the fourth secant 4x to the fifth tangent 4x to the fifth Okay, so there's the first one. All right, second one, y equals cosecant of 5x to the fifth. All right, again, I've got to have the derivative of cosecant memorized, which is negative cosecant cotangent. And then I have to recognize that this will include a chain because this 5x to the fifth is the inside function there. So y prime equals, I'm going to take the derivative of that cosecant, leaving the inside alone. So derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant of the 5x to the fifth and then cotangent 5x to the fifth all right times now my chain times the derivative of the inside function which is that 5x squared all right if i go to my next line here taking the derivative there i would have a negative cosecant 5x to the fifth times cotangent 5x to the fifth times a 25x to the fourth okay now clean it up a little bit taking this and the negative sign pulling it out in front I'm gonna have a negative 25 x to the fourth cosecant 5 x to the fifth cotangent 5 x to the fifth as my final derivative there I think the key to all of these are when you've got that chain rule involved you take the derivative of the outside function leaving that inside alone. So when I do the cosecant here, it's negative cosecant cotangent. This is the inside function. It gets left alone. And then I do the chain of the inside function out here by itself. All right, two more examples. All right, oftentimes you're going to see functions that look like f of x equals sine x to the fifth to the third power, all right, a lot of times the sign or to the, the power is written right there above the word sign, all right, usually what I like to tell my students is to rewrite this so that you can see that the base is sine x to the fifth and it's being raised to that third power, okay, so what I would probably do is rewrite first, so sine x to the fifth raised to the third power. When we do that, then hopefully you can see that the outside function is an x to the third and the inside function is the sine x to the fifth. So I have to do power rule on the outside function leaving this inside function alone and then doing the derivative of the inside. All right, so let's go f prime of x is equal to, I'm gonna take that derivative of that outside function, so I'm gonna go three sine x to the fifth because I want to leave that inside function alone subtract one from my exponent and then chain because I've got an inside function times the derivative of that inside function which is sine x to the fifth okay now in the next line I can calculate the derivative of my sine x to the fifth okay derivative of sine is cosine 
and I'm going to want to leave my inside function alone because here I have an inside and an outside again. My outside is the sine, my inside is x to the fifth. So I'm going to go 3 sine x to the fifth squared. Now when I take the derivative of sine, it's cosine, leave the inside function alone, so x to the fifth, times the derivative of that inside function, which is x to the fifth. And then that x to the fifth is just going to be a straight derivative there. 3 sine x to the fifth squared, cosine x to the fifth, and then times a 5x to the fourth right there. All right, cleaning that all up, putting this together and in front, 3 times 5 is going to give me a 15. So I can have a 15 x to the fourth. All right, and then you can leave your answer written at the way I have with that 2 outside there, but a lot of times you're going to see answers in textbooks and on worksheets where they put the 2 back above the word sine. So sine squared x to the fifth cosine x to the fifth. All right, either way to write that would be perfectly acceptable. Okay, but this involved two chains, all right, and I really highly recommend that every time you need to do a chain rule, you've got an inside function, inside function. Go ahead and write that ddx notation out so that you can do one of the derivatives at a time. I think it helps tremendously like that. Okay, now on this one right here, um, looks like we have an outside function of cosine and an inside function of that negative 3x squared plus 2 to the second power. And if you look at this inside function, it's a little bit more complicated than normal. It is going to involve a chain, okay, as well. So we've got a couple of different chains going on here. So f prime of x is equal to, all right, outside function is cosine. So derivative of cosine is negative sine. Leave the inside function alone. So negative 3x squared plus 2 squared times the derivative of that inside function. So the negative 3x squared plus 2 squared. All right, using this ddx notation in the middle of this derivative is going to now let us, all right, we've taken the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Now it's going to let me focus on just the derivative of that inside part right there. All right, so negative sine negative 3x squared plus 2 squared times, all right, now if I'm going to do this one, my outside function is x squared, my inside function is the negative 3x squared plus 2. So I've got to do power rule. I'm going to have to pull that down in front. So 2 times negative 3x squared plus 2. Subtract 1 from the exponent and then times ddx, the derivative of the inside there, which is negative 3x squared plus 2. Okay, running out of room here a little bit. Scoot over a little bit. So negative sine of negative 3x squared plus 2 squared times the 2, negative 3x squared plus 2, and then times, taking the derivative inside here, it's just going to be a negative 6 x. Two falls out there. Okay, now at this point I'd probably go ahead and put a bunch of things together. You could pull things out. I mean you could do just about anything with this to simplify. I think this negative here and this negative here is going to make my overall derivative positive. Okay, I could do a variety of things but if these two things are already pulled out and separated and factored so we could multiply those two things and put this out in front. So 2 times 6 x is going to give me a 12 x out in front. And we already said positive because there's a negative here and a negative here. So I think I'm going to just do that as a simplification and then stop. So like 12x because we want to make it positive. And then I'm going to keep um, the sign. I think I'm going to drop those square brackets. I don't necessarily think that we need them. Negative 3x squared plus 2 quantity squared times negative 3x squared plus 2. Okay, I think that's good enough for cleaning the derivative up. We could have done some distributing property there maybe and multiplied all this together and had a thing up in front. It just depends on how simplified you want your derivative, how, how simplified it really needs to be for your teacher. I think I would probably go ahead and accept that right there as a final answer. All right, so definitely 
thanks for watching for examples dealing with trig functions that included that chain rule and then these last two examples having more than one chain all right my my number one suggestion would be to go ahead and use that ddx notation every time you needed to take a derivative of an inside function because if the inside function also is a composite function in them, which means you're going to have another chain then it's just going to keep how many chains you have to do straight definitely thanks for watching and be sure and share with your friends thanks